So what exactly is going on with the dopamine system in people with ADHD? And what's going on with the dopamine system in people that have terrific levels of attention for any task? In the year 2015, an important paper came out. The first author is Spencer, and it came out in a journal called Biological Psychiatry. And it formalized the so-called low dopamine hypothesis of ADHD. The idea that dopamine was somehow involved or not at the appropriate levels in people with ADHD, had been around for a pretty long time. A formal proposition of the low dopamine hypothesis led to some really important experiments and understanding of what goes wrong in ADHD. It turns out that if dopamine levels are too low in particular circuits in the brain, that it leads to unnecessary firing of neurons in the brain that are unrelated to the task that one is trying to do and that is unrelated to the information that one is trying to focus on. So if you think back before, you've got this default mode network and a task related network, and they need to be in this kind of concert of anti-correlation and in ADHD, they're firing together. Well, the problem seems to be that when dopamine is low, certain neurons are firing when they shouldn't be. This is like a band, right? We'll go back to our band. That's a guitar, a bass, and a, and a person playing the drums. And it's as if, one of those or several of those instruments are playing notes when they shouldn't be playing, right? The pauses in music are just as important as the actual playing of notes. When dopamine is too low, neurons fire more than they should in these networks that govern attention. This is the so-called low dopamine hypothesis. And if you start looking anecdotally at what people with ADHD have done for decades, what you find is that They tend to use recreational drugs or they tend to indulge in non-drug stimulants. So things like drinking six cups of coffee or quadruple espressos or when it was more prominent, smoking a half a pack of cigarettes and drinking four cups of coffee a day. Or if the person had access to it, using cocaine as a recreational drug or amphetamine as a recreational drug. All of those substances that I just described increase levels of multiple neurotransmitters, but all have the quality of increasing levels of dopamine in the brain and in particular in the regions of the brain that regulate attention and these task related and default mode networks. Okay? Now, young children fortunately don't have access to those kinds of stimulants most of the time, and those stimulants all have high potential for abuse in adults. If you look at children, even very young children with ADHD, they show things like preference for sugary foods, which also act as dopamine inducing stimulants. Now, of course, once they get access to soda pop and coffee and tea, they start to indulge in those more than other people. For a long time, it was thought that children with ADHD consumed too many sugary foods or drank too much soda because they had poor levels of attention and because they couldn't make good decisions. They were too impulsive and so forth. An equally valid idea is that these children and these adults are actually trying to self-medicate by pursuing these compounds, right? Things like cocaine lead to huge increases in dopamine. Well, what happens with when somebody with ADHD takes that drug? It turns out they actually obtain heightened levels of focus. Their ability to focus on things other than things they absolutely care intensely about goes up. Likewise, children who consume anything that increases their levels of dopamine, if those children have ADHD, they tend to be calmer. They tend to be able to focus more. Now, this is very different than children who do not have ADHD. When they consume too much sugar, they tend to become super hyperactive. When they consume any kind of stimulant, they tend to go wild and run around like crazy. 